10 months ago I bought the Sony FX3 and today I'm going to share exactly how much I made with just the camera within that 10 months. But I'm also going to share whether I would buy this camera again or not. And before we start talking about how much I made with just the Sony FX3, we're gonna have to talk about how much I actually spend to get that Sony FX3 because you can get then Sony FX3 and just rent it out like this but you need some more stuff in order to shoot with it. And although in the end you only need the sensor paired with a lens and of course some batteries and memory cards, but you can actually shoot with it like this, I prefer to build out my rig a little bit more and treat my Sony FX3 like a cinema camera. So that's what I did. My rig is pretty basic and includes a base plate with 15 mm rods, a dovetail, a V-mount plate with V-mount batteries, a DZO PL2E mount adapter with DZO Vespid primes, a top handle, magic arm, a monitor, a rod clamp with another 15mm rod, which is for a Nucleus Nano Focus motor, and this one is paired with a Nucleus Nano Follow Focus side handle. And to control the exposure, I'm using the Tilter Mirage VND system. And to record the data, I'm using one 320 gigabyte and one 80 gigabyte Sony TUF CF Express Type A card, I believe. They're pretty expensive, but I'm happy with them. And including all of that stuff that I just told you and excluding the lenses, we are talking about 8,000 euros invest, excluding VAT. And again, also excluding the lenses. So we're just talking about the camera body with all of that accessories. But for how much can you actually rent out your Sony FX3? Well, my trusted rental house is giving out the Sony FX3 for 95 euros per day, including a cage, the top handle, six Sony batteries, and two 160 gigabyte Sony tough cards. Pretty fair price if you ask me. But this also only gives you like the basic, basic minimal rig that you need in order to shoot. You don't got a lens with that either. Um, but anyways, I have built it out my rig quite a little bit more. And if I would go to a rental house and rent exactly that stuff that I got right now on my rig, the rent would be something around 300 euros per day. So that is what I charge for my camera rig build. And if you calculate it like this, you have 8,000 euros invest and 300 euros to rent your camera out per day it would take you 27 production days where you rent out your camera with 100% of the budget to amortize it. And the math is pretty simple and I thought it would be very easy for me to get that, but I ended up not getting that. And there are two reasons for that. One reason is that I have just built this rig up over the time and I'm constantly adding new parts to it. But as of right now, I'm feeling very, very happy with every single accessory and I think that I'm going to stick to this rig for quite a while now but I wasn't able to charge the full day rate from the beginning on when I got the Sony FX3 in the first place so yeah that's one reason why I wasn't able to get to that 8000 euro amortizing rental fee back in you know you know what I mean the second reason is because I didn't know how to treat my filmmaking business. As some of you might know, I am a self-taught filmmaker, just getting into freelance filmmaking since 2021. And yeah, nobody never told me how to deal anything with the filmmaking business. So I ended up learning everything the hard way, I would say. And I was able to charge my clients more money because I invested in more gear, but I never really charged anything specifically from that gear. So what I'm saying here, I was able to increase my day rate as a filmmaker, which was good because I gained more experience and I was worth what I charged, but I never really charged for the specific gear. So I invested into cameras, lights, tripods, um, lenses and all that kind of stuff and never really charged for it. So that is reason number two why I wasn't able to get back the money from my invest. And this is uh, also the reason why I'm doing this video here, because I want to take you with me on my filmmaking journey and maybe help you for not making the same mistakes I did. So if you're interested in that, 
make sure to subscribe. Okay, now after all of that, how much did I make in 10 months owning the Sony FX3? I made a total of 2,947 euros with just my camera accessory rig build. And if we do a little bit of math here, I'm gonna take my phone for that. <laughs> um, it came down to 16 production days where I charged for my camera and doing a little bit of math again here, I am getting an average of 184 euros per day for that camera. And let's keep in mind everything that I said with building out that rig. The average is 100% going to increase in the future. And with this, the camera will eventually pay off itself and then start making me money. And that is something pretty nice to think about it like this as a filmmaking business. That is how it's supposed to be in the filmmaking world. And if you don't do it like this yet, please start doing this because otherwise you are ruining the filmmaking market as well. So I hope that I can help at least some of you watching this video right now. So as of right now, I made close to 3000 euros out of 8000 euros invest and that is 37.5% amortized and I expect more rentals in the upcoming months. And don't forget that this is only the day rate I charge for my camera. And usually when I charge somebody for my camera, I am also on set as the DP or one man show, cameraman, however you want to call it. Um, and I'm charging a day rate for myself as well. So if you see like this, the camera paid off a long time ago, but I like charts and analytics, so I stick to it. And now the question is, would I buy the Sony FX3 again? And with this, I wanna answer some questions, what I like about it and what I don't like about it. But first of all, I have to say that the Sony FX3 is a super versatile camera that gets you really high quality videos. And I see a lot of people using the Sony FX3 as a B cam to an ARRI, for example, and using it for any shitty rigs where you won't get the shot with the build out ARRI Mini LF or something like that. So we're talking about like car mounts, top down shots, gimbal shots, um, B cam as well. Yeah, stuff like that. But I personally use the Sony FX3 as my main camera and basically always use it just like this, pretty much built out. Um, yeah, and I'm super happy with it. But there are two things that kind of suck. First of all is that it only got HDMI out and no SDI out. Um, yeah, but I can see why they didn't put it into the FX3. Anyways. I would love to have it. And the second point is because I am using it as my main camera and I have built it out, I prefer a bigger body because a couple of my friends got the FX6 and it's just nice. It's easier to build out. It looks more professional on set, to be completely honest. But besides of that, I'm super, super happy with the FX3. And there are actually some points that I prefer on the FX3 three over the FX6, which is for example that it got IBIS, because sometimes it's handy to have because it just is a time saver on set. And um, yeah, that's great. Another point is the 3.5 jack for audio on the body so that I don't have to use the XLR top handle. That is great. And besides of that, it shares kind of the same specs with the FX6. So these are more general, but I really, really like, which is like the dual base ISO. It's insane. Um, the overall image quality, just super awesome. Data management workflow, just great. The file sizes are not too big, not too heavy. It's easy to work with. Um, yeah, grading is a lot of fun, especially lately. I'm learning a little bit more. I'm going to tag you a channel up here um, where you can check out a little bit more about color grading. He's insane, highly recommended. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how much I made with my Sony FX3, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And I hope that this video was helpful for you. And so, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and I see you in the next video. Bye.